Three ways not to play the gold to silver ratio. Hey everybody, thank you so much for watching Yankee Stacking. Really appreciate you watching my videos. I love it when you comment. I love it when you, you know, challenge me. And this video right here just might be one where you're going to want to challenge me because I'm going to talk about the gold to silver ratio and what not to do, what not to expect when you're playing that gold to silver ratio. So again, don't forget to uh, like and subscribe this video. And also think about hitting the bell too. I get a lot of... Uh, uh, comments from people, especially during my live streams, that say, oh, Yankee, I, I totally miss it. I didn't know. And a lot of the times, it's because I haven't hit the bell. So do that, and let's get right into it. I know a lot of you out there are excited about the gold to silver ratio. It is a key strategy for some of you. You're accumulating primarily silver with an eye to one day convert it into gold. Yes. That is a popular strategy. I hear it a lot, a lot of comments, a lot of people saying, yeah, Yankee, I, I, I do want to get into gold, uh, but right now I'm buying silver, and I think when that GSR, gold to silver ratio, uh, changes, I'm going to take my silver and I'm going to use it to get gold. Now, a lot of digital ink has been spilt over uh, how to do this. And, well, that's not what this video is about. I, I will give you the quick and dirty rundown right now. Uh, it's, it's simply about switching your holdings when the ratio swings to, you know, extremes, or at least historically, right? So let's say you, you have a, an ounce of gold and the ratio rises to, say, you know, 100. You would sell your one ounce of gold and get 100 ounces of silver, and, you know, if the, if the ratio shifts to uh, 50, let's say, you would sell your 100 ounces of silver for two ounces of gold, okay? And if you keep doing this, you'll actually accumulate quantities of one or the other metal without actually adding to your costs. So at least that's how the theory goes. And what you typically hear from those who are doing this, uh, in, you know, using the gold to silver ratio, is that historically the GSR has been anywhere from you know, 14 to almost 113, uh, just back in January, actually. Today, uh, as of the recording of this video, the GSR is back down to 96.84. And sometimes you hear that the, the average gold to silver ratio was around 30. You can look at this chart right here. You can see over a long period of time how stable that gold to silver ratio was and then just how it exploded and has really been more volatile uh, in, in prior decades. Some say that if the ratio were to return to the pre-1900 average of 16.13, the silver price would have to rise to about $105 an ounce. Some people point to 2007 when the gold to silver ratio averaged 51, or back in 1980 when the ratio stood at 17. And some like to mention that during the Roman Empire, the ratio was set all the way down to 12.3. Now, there are some people that like to point to the earth itself. They say that according to experts, silver is almost 19 times more abundant than gold within the Earth's crust. And to reach that ratio with gold, the silver price would need to hit around $90 an ounce. Some say that a more relevant measure of uh, physical availability is reserves and production. You see, according to the U.S. Geological Survey's Mineral Commodities Summaries, recent silver reserves were 10 times more abundant than gold, and recent production of silver was 9 times more abundant than gold. 10 to 1. 9 to 1. <laughs> With these kinds of ratios, the silver price would need to rise to about $165 per ounce or $195 dollars per ounce. 
You, you see how exciting this can be? And some people, they say that what will really push that GSR down is the fact that all the above ground silver inventory is currently and consistently being depleted because of its, you know, use for industrial purposes. And in contrast, most gold that has ever been mined is just sitting in a vault somewhere or me. <laughs> no. Um, you know, that though you could see with all those numbers how exciting that gold to silver ratio is for some people. And and because of all those numbers and, and a lot of other arguments too, people think that playing the GSR with physical gold and silver is a great strategy. So what do I say? I say baloney. <laughs> okay? And there are three reasons why I say that. Three ways that I don't think you should play the GSR. I really don't. I'm going to tell you what those three are right now in rapid fire, and then I'll go into more detail on them. I don't think that you should play the GSR first if you expect extreme historic ratios to come back. Two, if you expect your LCS dealer to actually honor the ratio based on spot price. And three, I don't think you should trade the ratio if you expect physical gold to absolutely be available when you go to make your trade with silver. Those are the three reasons. The first one is, I don't think you should do this if you expect historic ratios to return. I think 80 to 1, maybe 70 to 1. In fact, I'm not alone. Listen to what my LCS dealer, Tim, said. In your opinion, what is the right ratio? 60, 70 to 1? Does that make more sense? I think, I think right now, it probably in the 70s makes sense. Mm. Um but it really will depend on supply and demand. I agree with them. I think that's more reasonable, but why? The gold to silver ratio that existed 150 years ago was mostly the result of political influence and appeasement. It was an arbitrary number. Now, it, it, it might seem reasonable for you, know, you and me to, to expect a ratio for purposes of consistency and uniformity. Yeah, that's what we'd want, right? You know. It would make sense, but no, uh-uh. I don't believe there is any fundamental reason which justifies any particular ratio between gold and silver. Stackers, especially those playing the ratio, need to really remember that the argument for GSR reversion, you know, having it, you know, go back down based on historical norms, was based on ratios from the 18th and 19th century. Guys, that was back when bimetallism was the prevailing monetary standard. And the exchange rate between gold and silver was fixed. People walked around with this kind of stuff in their hands, in their pockets too. All right. No, so... How can I say this? Com comparing the ratio of one commodity to another... It's, it's valid maybe for, I don't know, 10, 20, maybe 30 years. But the problem with going all the way back hundreds of years and, and, and you know, thinking things are going to be that way is that there is so many distorting external variables. Let me give you an example. Do you care what the price of whale oil is? I don't think so. <laughs> I know I don't. Well, it was a major source of energy for hundreds of years, starting back in the 17th century. But this is the 21st century. Whale oil to silver ratio <laughs> means absolutely nothing now. Okay, and before you accuse me of silver bashing, you know, hating on silver, you, you do need to understand, especially those who are new to my channel, I am bullish on both metals, gold and silver. I love them. I think I think silver is a must have slightly speculative precious metal. 
especially considering that there is no commodity that you can buy right now that is selling for lower than it did back in 1980. I'll say that again. <laughs> there is no commodity you can buy right now that is selling for lower than it did in 1980. None. At least that's what I contend. And not just commodities either. Think about this too. The average price of a brand new car back in 1980 was $7,000. $7,000. Now, now, of course, if you, you know, adjust uh, these prices of things for inflation, you know, a lot of stuff costs the same or maybe even lower, like, like you know, like a TV or something. But but that's that's very important. That's the main reason to stack silver and gold to combat inflation. All right, all right so, so back to the GSR. If silver does gain on gold in a really significant way, it will have nothing to do with the average elemental crust abundance or, or uh, uh, how Spain controlled the price of silver back in you know, 1687. No, it'll have nothing to do with that. It will be relatively arbitrary, in my opinion. All right, so, so that's the first way I believe not to play the gold to silver ratio, expecting some incredible, you know, low ratio. In my opinion, <laughs> we aren't going to see those ratios of, you know, my grandparents or, 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 or the ancient past. It's not going to happen. All right, second reason and the second way you shouldn't play the GSR, and that is to expect your LCS dealer to honor the ratio based on spot price. Very important, spot price. So, so here's a scenario I want you to wrap your mind around. Okay, let's, let's say the, uh, uh, the GSR hits 60, okay? You know, oh, that's great. You know, you're going to oh, grab all your silver, you know, pick it up. <laughs> you're going you're gonna to box it all up, put it in your tubes, you know, get it in car, drive over to your LCS dealer. All right. So you want uh, uh, 60, you want one ounce of gold for 60 ounces of silver. So you want one of these for 60 of these. And uh, you, let, 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 let's say your um, uh, LCS dealer just kind of looks at you, tilts his head a little bit and chuckles and says, uh, <laughs> no, 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 no. That, that That's physical silver bullion. Uh, that isn't going to command a, as high a price as spot. Not, not even close. Wait, what? <laughs> the GSR is 60. <laughs> That's the ratio, man. <sighs> what I'm referring to is uh, you know, kind of what we're seeing right now. Right now with the price of silver over spot, right? In other words, premiums. But only this time in reverse. Spot is largely based on paper assets, not physical bullion. When it actually comes time for you to sell your silver for gold due to some you know, radical rise in silver's price and plummeting GSR, I think you're not going to be able to get the deal you think you're going to get. Either gold's premiums are going to be so insanely high, just like silver is now, or the sell price of silver will be lower than spot. And just like today with silver, gold buyers are going to be ticked off. They are going to be ripping mad. What? What are you talking about? How can you possibly be buying my silver for so low? What? What? Gold's premium is what? Do you think that's impossible? Okay. Did you ever expect bullion dealers to ignore such low spot prices and command such insane premiums today? I didn't. In fact, the ratio based on the actual cost of physical bullion is actually much lower already. Let's compare the price of a regular uh, 2020 one ounce gold eagle to a regular 2020 one ounce silver eagle. I went to JM Bullion. 
they're selling uh, the first for about uh, $1,876 and the second, the silver dollar, for $28 an ounce. Guys, that's a ratio of 66. That is low. Hmm? Sounds like uh, maybe it's time for some of you playing the ratio to grab up your silver, head over to the LCS and uh, make some exchanges, right? But if you really think you could get a one ounce American Gold Eagle for 66 ASEs, uh, no, I, I, I don't think so. I, I really doubt that. And and here's a side note too. Don't forget when you when you go to an LCS dealer and you, you want to do a trade silver for gold, they don't really like doing straight up trades. In fact, my uh, LCS won't do it. Um, many that I know won't just you know take your silver and give you gold right for tax you know purposes, uh, regulatory reasons, whatever. They need to convert it to fiat before they do the exchange they need to you need to sell your silver and then you can buy the gold with the cash so i don't think that you know sale purchase is gonna go the way you think i, I really don't and, that, and that's the second reason why i think you really need to be careful about how you play the gold to silver ratio at least in my opinion and the third reason, or the, the third way not to do it, I should say, is to expect the physical gold you're after to be available when you actually go to trade it in with your silver. Availability is the key here. Availability of your target physical precious metals. In this case, gold. Did, do, do I really have to push this one? I mean, think about it. Think about the times we're in. Think about how hard it's been to get any of this stuff for a period of time. And granted, the difficulty in acquiring this stuff has been mostly precipitated by the collapse in our economy from the pin. <laughs> uh, where did I put it? Uh, oh, there it is. The pin <laughs> of the uh, medical crisis. That's kind of, that's, that's the reason, right? But think about it. Do you really believe, do you really, really think that when silver's price is extremely high and the ratio is dramatically in its favor, silver's favor, you're just going to waltz into your LCS and he's going to have plenty of gold sitting there waiting for you to exchange your silver for Uh-uh. I, I don't I don't want to be harsh, but at some level I think you're dreaming. In fact, I could not have gone in uh, just two months ago with my Yankee cannon, right? And literally walked out with anywhere near the amount of silver the GSR would have demanded. No way. Not at all. They didn't have any silver. I, I couldn't have gotten it. And I, I think that is the big deal here. I think physical gold is going to be extremely difficult to get your hands on when everybody wants to convert silver to gold. You might be able to do it now. It's gotten a little less crazy. You know, uh, there's a there's a, you know, a high spot price ratio. There's some scarcity with silver, maybe. But that is my concern. Will there actually be gold for you to get? So, Yankee, what are you saying? Don't play the GSR? You know, people do it, Yankee. <laughs> they make money doing it. Well, yeah, you're right. Some do. But you know what they're usually doing it with? They're doing it with paper assets, like, like ETFs. And that's how I think you should play the gold to silver ratio. I told you three ways how not to do it, but I do think if you are determined to play the ratio, this is how you should do it with the ETF or paper markets, futures, or whatever you want to do. It's it's just a lot simpler to actually execute the trade. It you, you, you simply purchase the appropriate gold or silver ETF, 
at the right time, and that's it. You've executed the strategy. You know, some GSR players prefer, you know, uh, to do it this way, and they actually don't commit to an all-or-nothing approach, right? You know, they don't take all their silver ETFs and just over to gold. No, mm -mm. sometimes they just keep their positions open in both ETFs, gold and silver, and just add to them proportionately. So, so um, let's say the ratio rises, right? They would buy silver. And, and if it fell, they would buy gold. And they keep doing that without having, you know, to speculate on whether or not they hit the timing just right. So that's, you know, one way you could do it. But when it comes to physical bullion, the actual stuff we hold and we, 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 we love to have, right? I think there's a big mistake for at least three reasons uh, in doing it. And I think you just need to be very, very careful playing the gold to silver ratio with physical bullion. Well, that's my video, guys. I, I hope you appreciated it. I hope you liked it. Again, like and subscribe. And uh, I'm sure you're going to give me some comments, right? <laughs> Do you believe in playing the gold to silver ratio with physical bullion? Do you think it's going to be, you know, okay and, and, and work for you? Do you think you're really going to be able to take in all or a big chunk of your silver and get it converted into gold. Let me know. I'd love to hear what you have to say. And as always, I hope your day is A-OK. -okay.